when we lend money to a law firm, we're using their case inventory as collateral. We suggest that law firms and lawyers put estimated values and timing on their cases. Now, again, it depends on the kind of practice you have. If you have a high volume, lower value motor vehicle accident practice and that's all you do, you could use historical statistical information and say your average case settles for X, your average fee is Y, and it resolves in a Z number of months, whatever it may be, and apply that to your, your current number of cases and you can extrapolate that out if your case is resolved in less than a year if you have 500 cases and we want to see what you're going to do over the next three years we could presume if you're going to continue doing what you're doing you'll have 1500 cases and figure out the revenue projections from from there it's also important to note what your success rate is right traditional banks don't like lending money to companies with irregular cash flow they believe it equates to an actual credit risk but quality lawyers who work on quality cases are successful well over 90, 95% of the time. And if that's the case with you, the listeners today, make sure you bring that to the surface. You're gonna resolve over 95% of your cases successfully. Also, separate out your case costs from your fees. Case costs come out of your client's share of the settlement, not out of your law firm's revenue. So it, it's a minor point, but it makes a big difference in terms of your borrowing capabilities. So in terms of the, the, the strong pipeline, how do you demonstrate that? Come up with projected values, timing, how much you have out in case costs today, and how much more you're projecting to spend in case costs on your current docket over the next three years. That's your snapshot and the value, the revenue you're gonna generate and the case costs you're gonna recoup in the next 36 months. Seth, what do you wanna add? What we've seen is that, you know, you know, it's been over the last, you know, 10 months, what we've been noticing is that the referral firms very often have been hardest, hit hardest. The digital play has continued to work, TVs continue to work, but people that were counting on those, uh, on, on deal flow through referrals uh, have definitely taken a hit comparatively. People just aren't out networking and seeing people, seeing those people in the communities. So, I, you know, it's been an interesting period where, you know, thankfully being in the digital space, it's been a time when there've been so many eyeballs on there and so much opportunity. Google's had new products out there. Uh, but I'm curious to know, I'm gonna throw this back at you, Ari. You know, during this time, it has been an interesting ebb and flow where people who had consistent referral uh, pipelines, those have been more tenuous and people with uh, digital have gotten stronger. Is that something you've had to sort of, in, you know, sort of tweak when you're sort of figuring out what is you know gonna what the next year is going to look like absolutely and especially if a law firm is relying on one or very few referral sources if one of those dries up that will have a drastic impact on the future revenue of the firm so we do take that into account